Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a good few different styles, and I would say that generally speaking, this brewery is just all round very solid. One of my favourite Scottish craft breweries, in fact, and one that I would highly recommend that you check out. So it's always nice to try new beers from these guys. So for this one, we are going to have a look at a beer that is a style I very much enjoy. It's one of this brewery's core beers, but one that I've just never gotten around to trying actually, and I'm really not sure why. So I felt it was about time that we did a review of this one. So very curious to see how it turns out. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. Hopefully it's a good beer, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So um, yeah, for this review, we are going to head down to Gala Shields in the Scottish Borders, and that means that we're going to have a look at another beer from Tempest Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called the Modern Hellas. It comes in at 4.1% ABV and as the name tells you this one is a Hellas Lager or a Blonde Lager in other words. So uh, yeah very very curious to see what this one has in store for us. Apparently this is one of Tempest's most popular beers and like I said I just never got around to reviewing this one so let's see how we get on. As always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Tempest Brewing Company before, and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers, I've reviewed for you that's being added to quite regularly at the moment because I am at home in the motherland of Scotland and I'm sure we'll continue to add to it beyond this trip as well but as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Tempest Brewery then. So Tempest Brewing Company, Tempest Brewery, however you want to refer to them, was founded back in 2010 by Gavin and Anika Miko John. So Anika trained as a chef in New Zealand, but then the couple returned to Scotland in 2007 to run at the Cobbles Bar in Kelso. But Gavin had previously worked for the Whistler Brewing Company in British Columbia over in Canada, and so he had an appreciation for craft beer, and he'd taken brewing courses in Sydney and Australia while they were over there as well. But he actually home brewed in his garage in Wellington, New Zealand, with a 50 litre brewery and as we know Wellington New Zealand is a very very good beer city it's on my list for visits for um for out and about videos so you can look forward to that at some point within the next couple of years I think but Gavin is joined at the brewery by Alan Rice who acts as the business development manager and he previously worked for Stuart Brewery in Edinburgh and he also lived in New Zealand and Australia for different periods of time but originally this brewery was housed in old dairy buildings in Kelso and this brewery that they had there was largely homemade and engineered to produce big flavoured beers on a very very small budget but their beers proved to be very very popular and so they had to move to their current and bigger home at the Tweed Bank Industrial Estate in Gala Shields. But in June of 2019, they submitted plans to build a new brewery building with bar and restaurant on the site of the former Eildon Mill, which is very close to the new Tweed Bank railway station. So who knows, maybe at some point uh, we can go and visit that new site when it opens. From what I understand, it is still very much in the works that, but things have slowed down because of the whole COVID-19 situation. But as of October 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 125 different kinds of beer. There's lots and lots of different styles available from these guys. But uh, yeah, they are producing at least one or two new beers every month. And they are starting to produce some sour beers as well, from what I've seen. But uh, yeah, probably my favourite beers that I've had from these guys so far would be the Brave New World, which is their original West Coast IPA. Marmalade on Rye, which is... Um, uh, a double west, a sort of double west coast rye type IPA that is also very nice. And Old Parochial is probably my favourite Scottish brewed Scotch ale, and that is one that I really, really recommend that you check out. Mexicake is another popular one that these guys do as well, a sort of chili imperial stout, and uh, it is quite nice. But I'm not the biggest fan of uh, chili imperial stout, so the Old Parochial rates a little bit higher for me. But um, yeah, those would be my recommended beers from these guys, and as I said, they are one of my favourite Scottish breweries. So it's always nice to be able to review new things from these guys. But they are still a very small operation. So to be honest, their beer 
just can be a little bit difficult to get a hold of, even if you go to Edinburgh and Glasgow and things like that. So um, yeah, you might, you might struggle a little bit to find some of the beers, but hopefully with their new brewery, that'll change quite soon. But um, yeah, as I say, that is all I can really tell you about Tempest Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, that is it for your brewery history section. I can breathe a little bit now. But let's go on and actually have a little talk about the beer itself. So like I said to you at the start of the video, this one is a 4.1% Hellas Lager. Apparently it's hopped with Mandarina Bavaria, which as we know is a German hop, about 8% alpha acid, and it usually gives you lovely kind of oily orange tangerine sort of things, but the, the typical German noble character in the green component. And it's also got golden promise in the malt base as well. And I don't know if I've ever had that in a lager beer before so this should be quite interesting from that perspective now remember as well that the definition of a lager is a beer that uses a bottom fermenting yeast uh, in other words this is a yeast that ferments at lower temperatures usually between 8 to about 11 or 12 degrees celsius if memory serves me correctly there's many different types of lager beers you know you have the helles the dunkel the schwarz beer the bock beers the doppelbox um, and so on uh, and you have in the Czech Republic, you have similar things, you know, you have the, the Svetli, the Leitzak, the Czerny, the Tmavi, uh, the Vienna Lager, there's various different kinds of uh, lager beers, of course. When it comes to the Helles Lager, um, there are two different types of Helles Lager. One would be the Munich Helles, which in my experience tends to be a little bit more kind of bready. And you've also got the Dortmund Helles, which also is, um, that's a little bit more kind of hoppy and bitter in my experience. I've not reviewed too many Dortmund Helles for you on the, uh, the channel before. But yeah, those tend to be the main differences between the Munich and uh, Dortmund Helles. And of course, the Czech equivalent of that would be the Svetli in my uh, experience because a lot of these Czech laggers are just you know named differently because they're from the Czech Republic and the main difference between the Czech and the German ones Czech ones tend to be a little bit more bready and yeasty the German ones tend to be a little bit drier and crisper in my experience too you guys might disagree with that but these are the observations I've made um, over the years and remember beer is very subjective but yeah when they call this one a modern Hellas it's quite interesting because obviously Golden Promise is a malt that's quite often used in New England IPAs these days and then the Mandarina Bavaria is a hop that uh, it's a little bit higher alpha acid than what you would traditionally find in the hops used in the original you know Munich Hellas and things like that they would normally use Hallertau and Tetnanger hops and in the Czech Republic obviously they would use Jatitz or Sats as they're also known. But um, yeah, that's a little rundown of what a lager actually is. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on the can of this one before we open it up. There you can see the Tempest Brewing Company symbol. Then there's the modern Hellas. It just looks like a billboard kind of sitting on the edge of like a racetrack or something like that. Quite abstract uh, art, I guess you could say. But yeah, as you can see, 4.1% lager, as it says there. And it tells you a little bit about the beer on the back. This little lightning bolt in the glass sort of thing is one of the symbols of Tempest as well and it kind of keeps in with the weather theme that they've got but it says don't believe everything you read on billboards and don't believe everything the ev uh, evangelists tell you for those who preach that proper lager should taste of nothing this is a modern lager that actually tastes of something a cold fermented German lager made in Scotland with locally malted barley Bavarian hops wheat oats water yeast and nothing else respect tradition embrace modernity ah, so it does have a little bit of wheat and oats in it so this should be quite interesting but uh, yeah as I say Tempest a very well respected name in Scottish craft brewing this is one of their core beers so I have to say I'm very curious to see how it turns out 440 milliliters I think this cost me two pounds something so that's let's say it was two pounds 50 I think that's probably about right for this one so let's I bought this one in beer hive in Edinburgh if I remember correctly so I think it was about two pounds 50 that's about three euros 30 Swedish kroner and I guess somewhere in the region of like $3.50 American, something like that. Just to give those of you watching across the world a little bit of a price reference. Silver topped can. Let's get it out and into the glass and see how we go. There we are. I've actually got quite a few nice laggers in the fridge at the moment to uh, review. So you can look forward to those over the next little while. We've been getting a lot of really good laggers. And it's nice to see that lager beers are getting a bit more attention again in recent times, I have to say. But uh, yeah, we've got the majority of the beer into the glass there. Let me just line that up again so that my OCD is happy. And there we are. So, as you can see with this one, and as you would expect, it's poured a lovely 
uh, bright golden color, this one. So I would say it's got a little bit of a natural haze to it, which you can see that's probably down to the oats and the wheat in this. And I guess it's probably unfiltered as well. Although it might, you know, to be honest, I would wonder if it probably, maybe it has been filtered a little bit, but you still got a little bit of that residual haze in it. But anyway, you could see the beer when it poured, it came out with about a bit more than three quarters, nearly a full finger of a frothy, I would say, perfect white head. I don't think that's creamy. I think that is more of a perfect white head. You can see the head itself is very, very foamy when the camera comes into it. One or two little big bubbles in there, but not a lot. And that is just going to fade away to be a very nice kind of thin foamy layer. But a nice little bit of a natural haze to it. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones going up towards the uh, the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it looks pretty nice. And you can see if I put my fingers behind the glass there, it's... Um, it's just got a little bit of that natural haze to it. But yeah, I really uh, I really like it, this one, I have to say, in terms of its appearance. It's kind of what you would expect from a, a Helles straight out of the tap in uh, Munich or in Dortmund or whatever. Love a good a, a good Munich Helles. I got really into these when I went to live over in Heidelberg in Germany. But yeah, beautiful looking beer, this one. Nothing out of the ordinary from it in terms of its appearance. I think we can go on to the aroma and see what we think of that. So yeah, let's have a little look at this one. That does smell very nice. Now, what I'm going to say about this, um, when it comes to these lager beers, as I've said in many videos, I often tend to rate them in terms of authenticity. Now, this one you have to rate a bit differently. They're calling it a modern Hellas. It's got mandarin, Bavaria, oats and wheat and things that are not traditionally in Hellas lager beers. So we have to rate this a bit differently. But what I'll say about the aroma of this, the first impression of it is... Pretty good, actually, because it has enough authenticity to it to let you know, yeah, this is a Hellas Lager, but it just smells a little bit more kind of hoppy and a bit more bitey and things like that. So it gives you the idea that this is a kind of modern craft take on a Lager beer, which is what you want from the name. So I have to commend them for that. It does, and you know, with my experience of Tempest, I wouldn't expect anything bad from these guys. Let's just say that. Or I wouldn't expect anything disappointing. Um... I've only ever had one beer from these guys that was a bit odd and it wasn't lacking in flavour. It was just a really odd flavour combination. But um, yeah, this one I think is going to be pretty good. So what I'll say about this straight away is that it comes across as a very smooth and slightly crisp lager beer. Um, you do get a little bit of that more modern kind of higher alpha acid hop out of it. And it's got just a little bit of kind of fruity character. All things that you want from a hellish lager. So let's break this down. Let's break this down. So... On the um, on the um, multi side of things, then you can smell a little bit of a kind of fresh white bread crust coming out of it. So yeah, lovely soft white bready bread crust in there. Um, you almost can smell that it's it's a little bit like that kind of floury stuff that you get on a fresh loaf from the baker. You can definitely get that. You can smell the the soft white bread in there. That it comes across as quite fluffy actually. You can smell a bit of smoothness from the oats, and there is just a wee touch of bitiness from the um, from the wheat at the back of the nose there. But overall, the malt base in this one just smells really kind of smooth and very inviting. It smells like a little bit like a kind of wet. Uh, white bread if that makes sense which is an odd descriptor but that's the first thing that comes into my head with this one in terms of um in terms of sweetness i think there is a little bit of a kind of mcvitie's digestive biscuity character out of this one and um, you do get a little bit of that you can smell a bit of a more oily biscuit in the middle of the nose a wee bit of a kind of uh, mcvitie's digestive sort of thing as well as i say that more grainy kind of side of the the biscuit but um yeah it has a bit of everything you'd want from a hellas lager a little bit of biscuity sweetness a little bit of crispness that lovely soft white bread wee bit of bread crust underneath everything that you would want in the malt base in my opinion so let's look at the hoppy side of the beer so um hoppy side of things then it's got that typical kind of german noble element to it which is what you expect as i said earlier even when you get these higher alpha acid German hops like the Mandarina Bavaria, the Haller Blanc and things, the green component is still typically noble. It's just a bit more pungent, if you like. So you still get that soft little bit of earthiness out of it. There's a teeny bit of herbal quality in there. You've got a nice bright floral aromaticity, but still quite smooth. I would say that you always get a smooth green component from the German hops. And there's a nice little bit of a kind of smooth, wetter, grassy component to it. So I really like that about this beer for um, for sure. So on the fruity side of things, 
I think it matches it quite well. So you certainly get a nice wee bit of a kind of oily, orangey, tangerine kind of thing out of it. So yeah, lovely orangey, orangey, oily, lighter tangerine in there as well. But the smoothness of the green component and that more oily, but still quite light, fruity character, I think works um, works very, very well. So um, yeah, the aroma of this is really nice. It's got a bit more of an American fruitiness to it, but you've still got that German noble hoppy character and you've got a little bit of a kind of smoother uh, malt base to this. So in a lot of ways, it smells a little bit like a Munich Hellas, but just a bit fruitier, if that makes sense. So yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time to ponder over the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I think it's about time that we have a look at this one and see how we go. So yeah, this is the Modern Hellas, a 4.1% Hellas Lager beer with Golden Promise and oats, wheat and Mandarina Bavaria hops from Germany in it, from Tempest Brewing Company down in Galashiels in the Scottish borders. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skoll and cheers. Yeah, that's pretty damn solid, I have to say. Um, now, I don't really session beers anymore, but you could easily just smash a good few of those. That is very nice. It captures the the sort of... I, I think it captures like the Munich Hellas really quite well. It's got a little bit of Czech character too as well. It has got a little bit of that Czech um, Svetli sort of character to it as well. It's got a bit of the yeastiness and stuff like that, uh, I would say. But it really, it works. It just has a little bit more fruitiness to it and a little bit of a more bitey, hoppy character. So yeah, I can see why they say a modern Hellas with this one. But you know, that's typical of Tempest. These guys, when they, the beer is, is all, the beer is always what it says on the, on the can. You might get some unusual flavour combinations from them, but you'll always get everything that it talks about on the can. That's for sure. But this gets a thumbs up from me. This is a very, very nice lager beer. And as I say, my only complaint about Tempest is that they're, it, well, I think it's to do with the levels of production because they are still a remarkably small brewery for how long they've been around, but things have been delayed with their new facility, from what I understand. It's a bit of a shame that this beer isn't one that's more widely available in um, in Scotland, actually. So, yeah. This is pretty damn solid. Um, yeah. It's pretty much kind of what I expected from it, I would say, in terms of the, the aroma. So let's just break this down for you and see see how we go. So straight away across the middle of your palate then, you can feel that soft white bready character. That's middle and back third of your palate. You can feel a little bit of bread crust underneath, but you can feel that soft kind of wet sort of white bready character sitting on top of that. You can feel the wheat doing a little bit of work, just kind of thickening that out. We'll focus on the middle third of the palate now, but you can feel the wheat sitting on top of that, just thickening it out a wee bit. And you've also got that lovely oaty, creamy character uh, coming out of it as well. So um, yeah, I really like how that, um, how that goes together. So yeah, the... The malty side of this one is pretty nice. It's not as, I thought it was going to have a little bit of sweetness to it, but I don't get too much of that, I have to say. There's a little bit of it comes out in the... Um, there's a little bit of it comes out in the aftertaste, but not too much. You can kind of smell the, the golden promise is really smoothing out the... Um, it's really smoothing out the malty, um, the, the kind of the, the, the malty side of this beer. So I really like how that um, how that goes together in this one. So um, yeah, you can feel it just on top of that oaty layer. So as I say, bread crust, smooth white bread, bit of the, the wheaty thickness, smooth oats. Then right in the dead centre of your palate, you do get a little bit of that oily biscuity sort of thing. As you move further out from that you get a little bit more of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity element to the beer. And um, yeah, I think, oh, pardon me, I think that works, um, that does work quite well. So yeah, more concentrated biscuit, sort of oily biscuit in the middle and as you move further out, you get a little bit more of a kind of grainy McVitie's digestive. But as I say, 
those elements really do take a bit of a backseat to the kind of smoother characters of the wheat and the oat. I think that's the kind of dominant thing. And this beer really does feel more bready in terms of the malty side of things the further into the aftertaste you go. So yeah, I think that sums up the middle third of your palate in this one. So border region between front third and, uh, sorry, back, uh, middle third and back third of your palate, you get a little bit more of a bready build up in there, a wee bit of a bread crust for sure. Um, and yeah, you just got a little touch more greeniness to it, but then you go into that back third of your palate and you've got the same layers as before. Bit of bread crust underneath, slightly more grainy, bit of a more um, thicker white bready character on top of that, bit of a kind of wheaty bitiness there on top of it. You can feel the wheat gets a bit bitier towards the back of the palate. Some of the oatiness kind of spreads over into the back third of your palate as well. Then on top of that, you've got a bit of the more... Um, You've got a wee bit of that more kind of yeasty sort of thing coming out of the beer. So yeah, definitely a little bit more of a kind of dense yeasty uh, kind of thing coming out of the beer. So when you start at the back of your palate, as I always say, the flavour's a little bit taller. But as you come further forward, it kind of goes down a little bit like that. And then as you go into the middle um, third of your palate, the flavour's just squashed together, condensed down a little bit more. So yeah, you can get that out of this one quite nicely. But I think that covers... The malty and yeasty side of the beer. So let's look at the hoppy side of things then. So hoppy side of the beer again is kind of what I've experienced with um, with Mandarina Bavaria before. Back corners of the palate, the green component, a little bit of smooth earthiness there as you move further forward. It's a little touch herbal and as you push towards the kind of front corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of a kind of floral aromaticity coming out of this one. And I would say that it's quite a bright floral aromaticity but then around the front curve of the palate it's a little bit lighter and, uh, and more grassy I would say. So yeah I like that about this for sure. So a nice little bit of a lighter grassiness around there and it does have a wee bit of zestiness as well. You do get a little bit of bite of um, you get a wee tiny hint of spiciness out of the floral aromaticity, but it's also quite bright. And as I say, around the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy in a sense, and just a little touch of zestiness. But overall, I um, I like how that goes together. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, the fruity side of this beer, I think, is pretty nice actually. So on, yeah, let's focus on the front third of your palate then. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you've got a nice little bit of a bready build up in there. A uh, nice little bit of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing for sure. But then the base of that front third of your palate is, you know, a more kind of smooth, you know, white bread. I would say maybe a bit of the oaty characters creeping in there as well. You can feel that little bit of oaty dryness in there. But on top of that, you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So towards the back of that front third of your palate, you do get a little bit more of a kind of sultana-like note out of this one. You know, those dried white green grapey notes, you get a little bit of that. You do get a little bit of a kind of peary, dry kind of peary, apricot -y sort of thing. But then as you move further forward onto the front half of that front third of your tongue, there's a nice lighter, oily, tangerine character out of this one. And it just suits the beer uh, to a tea. I just, I really like this. I think this is a... Very, very nicely done beer. As you'll know if you've watched the channel over the last while, I'm a bit of a sucker for laggers these days, and I think Tempest have just done a really, really solid one here. I'm a bit disappointed in myself that I didn't have this before, to be honest with you. But the other thing I would add into that is that as you just reach the kind of front tip of your tongue, you maybe just get a teeny little bit of a slightly limey, gooseberry sort of thing coming out of this one just before you get the grassy esters right on the very tip of your palate. But uh, yeah, I think this is a very, very nicely done beer. So big thumbs up to Tempest Brewing Company for this one. I just wish, that it's just a bit of a shame that this is not more uh, readily accessible. And I do hope that when they get into their new brewery, they, if they can do laggers like this, I do hope that they dedicate a bit of time to, uh, you know, producing some doppel box and, uh, you know, Dunkos and doing some other things. Because obviously, if they can produce a Hellas like this, uh, which obviously, you know, they will have worked on and tweaked a little bit over the years, but if they can produce a Hellas like this, I don't see any reason why they couldn't focus a little bit of their production on lager beers and do um, and do very well. So, um, yeah, I think this is really damn solid. So well done to them. Anyway, let's round off the review with the mouthfeel then. Let's look at that. Mm. 
So yeah, this is a, um, you know, it's a really solid, um, you know, top end light bodied beer. The carbonation is very, very smooth in this one, but it still gives you a degree of crispness. And I'd say overall, it's a little bit, of, it's got a little bit of oily character to it, but again, I find it very, very smooth. Uh, in terms of hoppy bitterness, I think it's, you know, 20, sort of 20 IBU mark, I think it is about that. Yeah, um, 15 or 20 IBU, something like that. It's not going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness. Um, it's, you know, the malty side of things is very smooth. There is a degree of sweetness to it and a bit of graininess, but yeah, overall, just a very smooth malty backbone to the beer. And the fruity side of things, I think, is it's got a little bit of dry fruity character, but it's also kind of quite oily more than anything else. But I think this is just a really solid um, lager beer, this one. And in terms of its character, I'd say that it's somewhere between a Munich Hellas and uh, a Czech Svetli, to be honest with you. It's got a little bit more kind of smooth almost yeasty like character that you'd expect of the Czech side of things but it's still got the nice kind of breadiness that you'd expect of the Munich Hellas so uh, yeah just an all round very very satisfying beer and it's an ideal lager beer to have in your core range so like I said earlier a big thumbs up to Tempest Brewing Company for this one and I'm a bit disappointed in myself I didn't review this for you sooner because this beer has been around for um, for quite a few years actually when they were still using bottles actually uh, this beer was still around so um yeah needed to as i say this should have been reviewed a long time ago to be honest with you but nice to finally get it done so yeah let's leave it at that for this one then so yeah this is the modern hellas a uh, 4.1 percent hellas lager beer with golden promise and mandarina bavaria from tempest brewing company in gala shields and the scottish borders definitely worth picking up if you come across and hopefully we see more tempest beers on the shelves with the new brewery very very soon but uh, yeah once again thank you for watching my reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from tempest brewing company as well we will no doubt return to these guys again at some point soon and i will be keeping an eye on what new beers they're releasing and uh, yeah we'll see you on my next trip home maybe we can get some more tempest stuff to review for you but yeah until the next time slander just now check out my social media check out tempest brewing company social media let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from tempest brewing company and i'll see you guys again very soon slander skull and cheers